My name is Wendy Kimani and I am a singer, songwriter. I live in the Netherlands with my family, but I'm Kenyan still, so I haven't left you guys. And um, I'm a mom of one little boy called Taji. journey to parenthood is still going on <laughs> it's it's not been easy but it has some uh, rewarding moments you know but I'm still trying to figure it out you know but it's amazing it's it's one of those things that you can never be prepared for I don't know if someone took me through a course if I would be ready for this but yeah it's it's really amazing sometimes you have no sleep you want to get like you want to just kill yourself but then sometimes he does the tiniest little thing and it makes you so proud you cry it could be and someone else would look at it like okay what's wrong with you but it's amazing parenthood is amazing so i chose for a home water bath because it is it one one it's normal in holland so I'm not going to say that, yeah, just do it here in, in Kenya, you know, but the reason why it's normal, 90% of women give birth at home in Holland because the system has been, um, everything is ready in that way there. So midwives have been uh, taken in by the medical, like by the hospital. So it's, you know, they have a practice on their own and then they take you through it and you give birth at home, whether you want water bath or not. And that's normal. So they have all the equipment needed. They liaise with the hospital just in case there's any complication. So it's very normal and very, you know, it's in the system. And the reason I chose for that is because, you know, and sometimes you go to the hospital, you hear stories of being rushed. You know, you're being induced because you're on the clock. So this bed could be someone else's bed. And at home, it's your area, you know, you can make it however you want it to be. With music, if you want silence, and you're the boss and you decide how your birth is going to be. And also it'll take its natural course. I labored for 36, if not more, hours. <laughs> and I was not rushed. And that's why I wanted to do it. I was doing, um, well, I had a doula. And her doula, she's actually a Kenyan. She lives in Holland as well. And she taught me how to do hypnobirthing. Hypnobirthing is where you like, uh, you hypnotize yourself and put yourself in this bubble where you can manage the pain. The pain is there, but it's, so, it's really manageable. To me, a leg cramp was worse than, <laughs> than childbirth contractions, seriously. But it's because I knew how to manage it. And it's lit I have to say it's the best experience of my life. It's, it was really special. So what happened is uh, we had classes, they had no classes. He, my husband was taught what to do. So how to, when to massage me, uh, to also guide me through my breathing exercises and how to keep me in that bubble. So he was like the watchman of anything that's going to get me out of that bubble. He was there trying to make sure that I stay there and I'm in control. Um, that's something he was taught. Uh, we had music, you know, the spa music. <laughs> that's what I was playing, so it was really calm. The blinds were closed. Uh, people were whispering and not talking. If you had to talk, it was whispering. So it was really like a really zen moment, like, well, moments. And then, yeah, but that was like the day of the birth. The day before, it was so easy. I, had, I was sitting on my birthing ball the whole time walking, talking, my family was there, my mom was there, my sister was there, um, my nieces, my nephews. It was such a nice family situation that it was, it was awesome. That's why I think it was really special, yeah. It taught me that, yeah, medicine might bring in new things to deal with, with pain and all the all that stuff but we shouldn't forget about the old ways and how it was done because i didn't use medication at all at all and i didn't even get to the point where i was like you know what i wish i actually had medication no because they said if you do 
we'll easily quickly take you to the hospital. But I didn't, and I didn't want it, not at any point. So for me, I learned that, I just learned that we are capable of doing so much, we're capable of handling so much, and the whole epidural thing is, it's scary. It was very scary to me, and that's why I took it, I took the hypnobirthing very seriously, and I just did not want to have those complications with your back and all that stuff, so this this was the best this this is something and you, you can take a lot yeah <laughs> i have to say kenya the tradition of family being there then this child is the child of the family is so strong you know you have all the help you don't have to delegate they already know what to do you know um, there, not a lot of people are having children by choice, you know, and so also the experience might not be there. So there's a lot of delegating. And when you're a mom, sometimes delegating, you just even don't want to delegate because you have so much on your mind. You just need someone who will come and do. So I'm like, okay, Wendy, I'm here, go. You know what I mean? And that helps a mom a lot. It does. So that the culture difference was difficult for me because I never thought. I never thought I would end, you know. Um, but something I also really like about there is that everything is paid for. Everything. I didn't have to think about bills for hospitals. For him, for him, everything is paid for till he's 18. Medical, everything. So, whether I was going to give birth in the hospital or at home, it was free. You know. Well, you have to pay every month, like, uh, medical fees, uh, what do you call it? medical insurance, but it's free. They're taken care of, so that's that, that's what I love about there. And the other thing I don't like <laughs> is that everything is so expensive to get help. It's expensive, so a lot of moms stay at home, which is also not a bad thing, because then you really bond with your child. But if you have a job, they have daycares, but it's quite expensive, really expensive. So. It all depends on, you know, what a mom chooses to do. Uh, when, when Taji was born, I, I was, I think I went into, I, I know I went into postpartum depression. I was scared about that because before that I have, I have, not for, I have PCOS. PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. And part, part of the things that, the symptoms of PCOS is depression, obesity, you know, the weight gain, uh, you know, growing hair and unwanted areas, just a lot of symptoms. But now the whole depression situation, I was scared because now I'm prone to it and I got it. And that has been the most difficult one year of my life. I can't say I'm completely out of it. I'm actually working with someone to get out of it completely but first weeks or i think a month i was a zombie thank god my family my mom my sisters my husband they were there but then now they left now it was just me and my husband and it's difficult you know it's like i didn't know i just wanted to leave i just wanted to leave because at first i felt guilty for bringing him into this crazy world I was like, what was I thinking? Because he's so small, he's so fragile. And then being depressed, you just feel hopeless and worthless. And then now he's there, and you just feel like, why am I, why did God give you this mom? You know, it's just, I can't even tell you how many thoughts that pass through someone who's going through postpartum depression. And that has been a challenge. But thank God he is such an easy baby. Well, the sleeping was not easy. <laughs> But he's easy, he's happy, you know, and that's the thing. And my husband was there to help with everything, but with postpartum depression, you can't explain it. Even if someone helps, it's like, I'm just too overwhelmed and you'd have no idea. Nothing has changed, but I'm coming out of it. So yeah, I'm still working on it, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been very difficult for me, so I can't even say. <laughs> that motherhood was like, you know, the dream you hear about, yeah. But he's, he is my, um, when I see him, he talks a lot. 
I wanted a confident boy and he's already becoming confident. He doesn't even say words, but he but he talks, you know. And I'm like I'm doing something right. I guess that's what's getting me out of it because I feel like he he assures me you're doing something right. Like look at me, you know. You're good. Yeah. Um, with Taji, it's so interesting because he he does everything at once. So he didn't do he he just did, he didn't do a lot of things for a long time. We're like, oh my god, should he be sitting by now? And then all of a sudden he's sitting, standing, and crawling all at the same time. That was like, okay, relax. <laughs> And now he's like, uh, he's walking all over the place. He's refused to walk because he's just too comfortable with crawling. And I'm like, okay. But I know for sure he's just going to walk and do a lot. Walk, run, all at the same time. He is, um, he learns so fast. Like he, I don't know, he just, he's like a little, you know, he's like owie and, and mommy. And he has his, his own thing. Like, he follows his own rules. And f to me, I see that as someone who has his own opinion. You know, I'll do it when I want to do it. You know, <laughs> might be stubborn, maybe like me. <laughs> but yeah, but he, I just love, I love that he's a strong personality and he knows what he wants to do and he'll do it on his own terms. So I, I love seeing that. Just a little person on his own, doing his own thing. It's just amazing. Taji does not like toys. <laughs> I don't understand. He does not play with toys. We bought toys. He's just like, ah, okay, done. But then socket, wires, cables, plugs, phones, remotes. <laughs> oh my God, these things, my earrings, necklaces, anything that's just not a toy. That's exactly what he wants to play with. So I'll be cooking and I need to keep him busy. I give him a plastic cup, plastic spoon. Oh, you should see that guy. He's just like, hours it's unbelievable it's like what is going on i made him like a little um you know the pringles <laughs> container put holes in it and give him straws him concentrating to put those straws into the holes magic i'm telling you any parent needs to do that because it keeps them busy and also helps them in their whole the motor skills so yeah it's like kids tell you what they want you know what i mean so that's 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 him he loves to laugh a lot. Dancing. This guy, oh my God. Like, he's just like... <laughs> he loves to dance. I was like, I mean, if my child doesn't dance or love music, there'd be something wrong, you know? And he loves to dance and I love that. He loves to hear me sing. That's another one. I'm so happy. I was like, oh, thank God, please let him like my voice. So he loves it. He smiles. So we sing every time we're taking a bath. And he also tries to sing. He's like, <laughs> it's not there yet, but it's getting there. Yeah, he's he's such a character and like peekaboo and you know, he likes when you chase him, he doesn't run away. He comes towards you. I don't even understand what that's about. It's like he's ready for the challenge, like let's wrestle. He wrestles with his dad a lot. Sometimes I'm just like, you guys, you're going to hurt you. You're going to hurt. He wants to do it. I'm like, yeah, he gets hurt, he's just like Let's continue. He loves to play. So I love his character. He's, he's such an out there person and I, that's what I want him to be. Yeah. Weaning Taji was not, actually, it was actually not difficult. He wanted to eat. Already by five months, he was reaching out to whatever I was eating. I started off with, because uh, Taji breastfed till he was six months. Then when he was six months, he just had things to do and places to go. <laughs> he did not have time for breastfeeding. <laughs> he was like, okay, like, uh, huh, huh. It, it distracted. It was so crazy. So um, I started with, I remember the first thing I gave him was prunes. And then I gave him, of course, butternut squash, potatoes. He loves potatoes. He loves potatoes, so I started with that. Of course, with spinach and peas, but one by one, and then I mix them together. He's never had an issue with eating, so he eats. 
only when he's teething, then it became a problem. There was a two-week period that we almost cried. <laughs> My husband and I were just like, we who can we give this one? <laughs> we can come back when, <laughs> when he eats. But then the grandpa comes, gives him a little bread, he eats. It, it's just crazy. But that was like a two-week period that was crazy. Otherwise, he eats. He eats a lot, you know. And, but he also plays a lot. He has a lot of muscle. He's not like a chubby guy, but he's like a, a steady, strong guy, you know. Taji has taught me to stop over worrying. Like just not to worry too much because things will be okay. You know, because the whole, that period that was really dark, he always imagines like, like the most taken care of baby, you know. He's like, I, I'm okay, I got this, look at me, I'm growing perfectly, you know. He accepts things, he took sleep training so well, weaning so well. Uh, you know, he, when it went to the, to the, first, the first time we went for a play group, I was afraid, is he going to be a little bit antisocial? <sighs> Two seconds, he was there with other kids, he, as in he's so amazing. And he's taught me, don't worry, you're doing a good job. Now you just take care of yourself. That's what I feel. That, that's what I feel he's saying, <laughs> you know. Who knew that a one-year-old can make you feel like that, you know? Yeah. For any mother who's gone through postpartum depression, I would say immediately you feel it. First of all, talk. talk. When you feel that dark cloud, you're just sad, you want to cry all the time, you want to leave your family, like you just want to leave and go, or feeling like harmful thoughts towards your baby or all those things, immediately you feel those things. Say them to someone, a mother, definitely, and then after that, seek help. It's not at a, seek help. There's a reason people have these kind of jobs. Seek help because it'll get you out of that situation faster. Because babies also feel what you're feeling. They're with you all the time. So take care of you first and then you'll be able to take care of this baby. You know, we have this thing of being a mother, no, you have to sacrifice everything. And no, 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 take care of you first. How are you gonna take care of somebody else if you don't even know yourself, you know what I mean? So seek help, don't even, don't even wait. Don't wait, it's not a taboo and it's not embarrassing. Do it. If you want to move and you're, you have kids and you're worried about them adjusting, kids are resilient, you don't understand. Kids can, kids settle when, wherever they go. So don't even worry about that. You go with a kid who's five, like to Holland, they'll start speaking Dutch faster than you do. And then they'll be like, no, I'm Dutch. So that's not even, you shouldn't even worry about that. Move, it's, plus it's great for them because it opens up their mind. Then they get to know different places. They get to think out of the box. They, they're smarter, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're tra well traveled and that's always a good thing. So don't be afraid, don't, don't nima your kids, you know. Give them as much as you can. If you can travel with them, travel with them. Trust me, it'll build their character so much. I mean, Taji has been to Greece now, he's been to Kenya, he's been to Holland. He's only one. So, and we're planning to do more, more of these travels, so do it. <laughs>